Hi everyone and welcome to another Heroes and Bosses video. This time I'm going to create a base with a collapsed wall on it. For this I'll be using some thin cork board that you can buy in most art supply shops and some plastic card which I bought at Green Stuff World. This stuff is textured but I'll be using the untextured side of it for this base. I'm also using some jumbo paper clips which will serve as the rebar in the walls. I'm going to be creating this on one of the 60mm bases provided with the Castellan robots from Games Workshop. First I'm going to tear off a piece of the cork board that will fit on the base. This is going to be the interior of the wall which I'm going to try to make look like some kind of reinforced concrete. I also want to make this wall look like it's been split apart and the rebar is exposed so I'm taking this piece of cork and ripping it in half. And then I'm going to just rip this up so it fits a little better. Next I want to create the exterior of the wall. I'm taking the two pieces of cork and I'm tracing them both onto the plastic card. Then I'm going to roughly score around the line I drew and then rip off a piece that sort of fits over the cork. Next I'm sticking the two pieces of cork back together and planning out where the rebar is going to go. I want to make sure the holes I drill in each piece are going to line up. The rebar is just going to be made of this paper clip cut into short pieces. And if you have a drill I'd recommend using it for this. You can cut the paper clip to have a sharp tip and then force it into the cork but the drill is a lot easier. After sticking the two pieces together, I'm going to glue all the parts of the wall together on the base using super glue. Glue the pieces of plastic card into the right spots and then put something heavy on top just to make sure it all stays flat while the glue hardens. Alright, you can see here that I primed the entire base in black, but before I did that I should have used some pliers to bend the edges of the plastic card. This is looking too flat and smooth, so I want to make it a little more beaten up. I'm also going to use a hobby knife to put a few gouges into the wall. Now once that's done, prime your base in any color you choose. The first colors I'm going to do are the interior of the wall. I'm first covering all of the cork with rhinoxide. I'm not worried about being neat at this part, I'm just getting that first color on. Once that's dried, I'm dry brushing all of the cork with Morn Fang Brown. Again, this can be done pretty quickly. I'm not worried about hitting other parts of the base. And finally, I'm doing a light dry brush with Talarn Sand. Now since I got so trigger happy with my spray primer, I need to touch up the spots where I use my pliers and knife with some brush on primer before I continue. For the rebar, I'm just using a silver paint. It doesn't matter which one you use, it's mostly going to be covered in rust later anyhow. Next I'm using the fang to paint the outer wall and this is going to take probably three layers to get a good solid color. Yep, definitely three layers. This is a large base so it needs something to break up all that blue. On a smaller base you could use some warning stripes or battle damage or some rust spots. I'll be doing all of those as well but I'm going to be using some water transfers for visual interest. 
These ones are called Futuristic Lettering from Fallout Hobbies, and I'll post a link in the description in case you're interested in getting some of these. Your first step when applying water transfers should be to coat the area with a layer of gloss varnish. This will create a nice smooth surface for the transfer to adhere to. I'm completely covering both sections of wall, not just the area where the transfer is going. This is so there's no obvious discontinuity in the texture or color of the wall. Next I'm just cutting out the transfers I want and soaking them in water for about 30 seconds. Put some water down on the area where you want the transfer so it doesn't immediately stick to the wall. This way you can adjust where you want it. Once you're happy with the positioning, gently press down with some paper towel to absorb the extra water. Next you'll want to add another layer or two of the gloss varnish to seal the transfer down. If you don't do this, the transfer will eventually peel away. I always add a bit of water to my gloss varnish because I've had it start to dry and clump as I was spreading it. You'll get a much flatter and smoother coverage if you add a bit of water. Once that's completely dry, I'm adding a layer of matte varnish. This can be a spray-on or brush-on varnish, doesn't really matter, but once it's on, you can then paint on top of the transfers with no problems. One thing I will mention about Fallout Hobby transfers is that they're fairly thick, unlike transfers from, say, Forge World, so it takes a bit more work to hide their edges with paint and varnish. Thanks to the matte varnish, the outer wall now looks like a window after kids have smeared their hands all over it, so I'm giving it a fresh coat of the fang. And while I've got this paint out, I'm using it to put some chips and scratches into the lettering. Next I'm using some Nuln Oil Wash and just running it into these scratches. After that I'm using Rust Grey from Games Workshop to do a dry brush edge highlight all around the walls. I'm also going to dry brush the raised edges of the scratches and then I'm going to just stipple my dry brush all around the wall to give it more of a wear and tear look. Okay, it's time to add the rest of the components to the base. I'm starting off with some window screen. This is going to be a bit of fencing wire and I'm also going to add some more cork and plastic card. These are going to add a few more broken pieces of wall around the base. And to hold everything down and add some dirt texture, I'm using Dark Earth from Vallejo. So just like before, I'm bending the plastic card with pliers and I'm breaking the cork into little bits of rubble. As I said before, this dark earth is going to be both my dirt and glue. I'm going to put it on good and thick where I want to attach more debris. I'm also using a bit of super glue here to make sure these two pieces stay together. I've taken a bit of window screen and rolled it up and glued it together. Then I'm going to bury it part way into the mud. I'm also going to dab a few small spots of the earth texture onto the wall. Next I want to paint this new debris, but first I need to add some primer. This one is actually black airbrush primer from Vallejo. I probably should have read that label more carefully, but it works just fine. Once the primer dries, I'm just painting the extra bits of wall with the same colors as before. This bit of screen is getting painted with the same silver that I used on the rebar. Now I'm going to do the dirt with two layers of dry brushing. The first one is going to be a heavy dry brush of Earth from Vallejo. The second is going to be a much lighter dry brush using Ushabdi Bone. Next I want to add a little bit of color variation and shadow to the dirt with two different color washes. The first is Athonian Camo Shade, and I'm just dabbing this in random places, but focusing on any grooves or holes in the dirt. 
Then I'm going to do the same thing with Seraphim Sepia. All of the silver bits are now getting some rust effects. You can use any reddish brown or bright orange for this. It does not have to be a special rust effect paint. I'm starting off by dabbing some typhus corrosion in some random places, and then I'm following that up with some orange rust paint from Secret Weapon. Any spots that aren't quite bright enough are getting a dry brush with some riser rust. And now I'm painting the rim with some German Grey from P3, but only because that's the color I've been using for my Admech army so far. The final painting step for this base is to add a few chip marks in the paint. I'm doing this with a combination of Rhinox Hide and Rust Grey. I'm going to stipple on some scratch marks with the Rhinox Hide, and then I'm going to follow that up with some Rust Grey on one side of the scratch. If you squint your eyes, it kind of looks like something hit the wall and chipped the paint. Once everything is dry, I'm spraying the whole thing with a layer of matte varnish. This one is Tester's Dull Coat. As the final touch, I'm adding a bit of grass to the base. I'm going to be using Wasteland Tufts from Army Painter. I don't like keeping them in their round shape, however. It doesn't look natural, so I'm cutting or tearing these into randomly shaped patches of grass. Next, I'm going to figure out where I want these to go before committing myself with the glue. And finally, I'm super gluing these into place. And there you have it, a toppled wall for one of your miniatures to stand on and look like a tough guy. Thank you very much to all my patrons for supporting these videos, and a special thanks to Brian Jones for sponsoring the channel. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. I have a ton of other basing videos, and some of those should be popping onto your screen momentarily. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.